story. You got to hear about the grandfather clock. Well, I guess I have to say a few things. First of all, um, what I'm telling you is true. You can't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up. Um, it's, a, it's endorsed by my wife. She, she gave me permission to divulge the family secrets. Uh, so, that, so that's been, I've been deputized. Um, it's part of the oral history of our family. And um, I don't know where to really start other than I had the definitive mother-in-law from hell. And, um, <laughs> I, so our stories always, family stories have prologues, and then the body of the story, and then most of them have epilogues. I only saw from hell. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> the scene, um, Who's also Betsy and I and got married in 1978 in Birmingham, Alabama, where parents And um, we shortly thereafter moved to Seattle, Washington, the furthest point away from the U.S., <laughs> not by chance. <laughs> uh, so Betsy's parents remained in Birmingham while we were out there, and a typical phone call from Betsy's mother uh, long distance, pre cell phone days, would be uh, Jeffrey. I've been no, no hello, you know, knows how's my daughter, how are my only two grandchildren, none of that. How's the other? Jeffrey, I've been thinking, go into the living room, move the brown chair three feet to the left. <laughs> so I give her one of these, you know, and I get, young man. I know damn well you didn't move that chair. You get back there. This is the that chair. <laughs> so I'd walk in and slide the chair over and um, walk back to the phone. She'd say, how does that look, Jeffrey? It looks fine. Click. End, end of transmission. So that, that gives a little flavor for Betsy's mother. And she was, she was pretty much obsessed with furniture. Um, <laughs> so she started a company um, to buy and sell antiques. Well, it was really buy, and <laughs> the selling was not part of the equation. So it was a way she could collect more shit and pretend that it was a, a, a business. And um, I don't know if I should divert. Wait a second, should I divert for a minute here? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yes. divert for just a, a, quick, a quick second. Um, so great uncle Don, who lived in Connecticut uh, on the coast, died and he left Betsy, his great niece, I guess, um, his sofa in the will, you know. And this is a sofa that Betsy's dad had slept on when he visited Uncle Don from Dartmouth in 1947. So this is, you know, like 1980 something, pretty ragged. Sofas in Connecticut were in Seattle. <laughs> we, we said, no, it's okay, we can pass on it. But Betsy's mother could not bear to see the sofa go, so she arranged for the next door neighbor to take care of the sofa. But then a year later, that guy died, and the uh, executor of the state said, you, you have three days to come and get the sofa. This is a big sofa, you know, like a 10 foot long sofa. So, um, Betsy's mother decided that she was going to ship it to us, collect, of course. And uh, this is where it gets into multiple choice. Do you think she shipped you can that ship sofa things by collect? United Van Lines? And that's A. Uh, B, Roadway Express. Or C, FedEx. FedEx. <laughs> How many C's do I have? Yeah. <laughs> so next day, Betsy answers the door, <laughs> and the FedEx guy's there, and uh, she says, "Wow, you have a letter for me?" I says, "You don't know?" <laughs> and uh, Betsy says, "No. What is it?" I said, "It's a sofa." And uh, Betsy says, "Oh, this is too freaky." Um, you know, it was also with a, about a $500 bill attached. Oh my God! <laughs> um, and they, so again, this is pre-cell phones. So the guy says, "Can I come in and use your phone?" And he gets on the phone and he dials FedEx back to the dispatcher. He says, "Okay, guys, I got her here. We have the office pool going, lady. And um, do you know the person who sent you the sofa?" <laughs> he said, "Yes." And you can hear these groans in the background. <laughs> oh no, I lost that part of the. Yeah. Uh, is it a relative? Yes. You know. 
Anyway, so... <laughs> This is the kind of shit we had to put up with all the time. So Betsy calls her mother and said, Mom, and Betsy doesn't usually curse like I just was. She said, what in the hell were you thinking about when you sent that thing FedEx? Oh, young lady, it should be perfectly obvious. With FedEx, I'll know if it's lost within one day. <laughs> so we were thinking, you know, the whole new advertising campaign. FedEx, if you absolutely positively need to know if it's lost. No. So, so this is a flavor of, of what we were dealing with. So, okay, now let's get into the grandfather talk. So we scene shifts to about three days before Christmas, 1983. And it was a dark and snowy night in Seattle. Whoa. Uh, one of the few snowy nights. Uh, oh, well, no, no, three, that's right. Three days before she called us, let me back up a little bit and said, kids, I just got in a container load of stuff from England and um, give you a grandfather clock for Christmas. And we thought, wow, you know, that is really nice. We appreciate that. And we knew that they were going to be driving out of a Florida Connelline van in April. So we said, knowing what it costs to ship stuff, uh, we said, why don't you... Um, just throw it in the van when you come out in April. You know, send us a picture now, put it in the van, you know, bring it out with you when you come to see us in April. So we didn't think anything more about it until Christmas Eve. That was the dark and snowy night. And about 10 p.m. Christmas Eve, I get this call from Delta Air Freight. And I go, you. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. the guy says, hi. Uh, Mr. Miller, um, your, uh, your precious cargo is brought. And I thought, oh, this is luck. It's Christmas Eve, it's 10 o'clock, it's snowing. I'll come in a couple days and pick it up, okay? okay? No, you've got to come down right now. And he had this, he seriously, he had, he had this sense of urgency in his voice. And I, I just, I couldn't bear to let it go. So I, we had the old Volkswagen van then, you know, the blue and white 77 van. I got the quick and easy clamps. Remember the two yeah. by four were the quick and easy, yeah. the rain gutter? Everyone you had some of those. Because I didn't know how big it was. I thought I might have to strap it on the roof rack. <laughs> and um, threw in some bungee cord and some rope and drive down to Delta Air Freight back up to the dock. And I, I go in and the guy behind the counter is there and I said, well, I'm Jeff Gallard up, up here to pick up my car. Oh, just sign here. And so I signed there and there was no money due. And man, I was I was excited. <laughs> Nothing, no money due. So he <laughs> said, where would you like your precious cargo, sir? I said, well, I don't know. Let's just see how big it is. And we walk around the corner and she's packed the grandfather clock in a pine box coffin and has written grandfather on it. <laughs> <laughs> This guy. <laughs> it turns out that you can fly free if you're dead. So, <laughs> so at that point, I'm committed because I didn't want to pay the freight bill. <laughs> and it was too big to fit in the van. So I said, come on, guys, let's get a forklift, you know. And we forklift the grand head up on the roof. And I bungee corded back. <laughs> We drive off in Grandpa the night. The so, so that's the body of the story. So the epilogue. The body. The, 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 the epilogue is five years later. Betsy gets the call from the mom. You open the top. Betsy, I just sold the white wicker chair. And she said, well, you mean the one I'm sitting on, Mother? And she says, yes, I sold it. You bring it down to Delta Air Freight right now <laughs> and ship it back to me. <laughs> So Betsy, being the, the good daughter, puts the white wicker chair in the Volkswagen van, drives down to Delta Air Freight, and well, Happy knows Betsy, but she's she's um, she's a talker. <laughs> she's like she never met a stranger kind of person. So she transacts her business and uh, says to the guy at the Delta Air Freight counter, "I bet you've seen some mighty unusual things here in your 32 years in Delta Air Freight." <laughs> <laughs> the guy takes the pencil from behind his ear and puts it down. He says. Lady, nothing beat Christmas Eve 83. <laughs> it was a dark and snowy night. <laughs> and this bearded hippie guy drove up in a blue van, just like yours. <laughs>
<laughs> and he goes through the whole story. Said, Lady, I was so stressed out, I had to take 10 days off medical leave of absence. <laughs> so Betsy said, oh my, you know, Helen saying, the world needs more nice men like you. And she went home and baked him some chocolate chip cookies and brought him back. So. <laughs> That's a great time. Oh nice. God, what a classic. <laughs> that is the best one. <laughs> <part. laughs> That's going right up on the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we're talking about uh, poetry, 